as a thick-headed Irish bricklayer, um, which I still freaking am, um, so many people tell you that you can't do things. And the Irish boy in me and the bulldog says, if you tell me I can't do something, then I'm gonna go and do it, like all entrepreneurs. Of course, the more I did, the more exciting it got, the more uh, out of this world it got, literally. Um, we just kind of thought, well, hang on, now nothing's impossible. And I really got hooked on that addiction of someone going, well, I want to go down and see the wreck of the Titanic. And, you know, I want to play drums with Guns N' Roses. I want a uh, piano lesson by uh, Sir Elton John. And it was that addiction that got me excited into being able to go out there and actually doing it and allow them to do it, you know, by me. I've often been asked why I wanted to write a book and my answer's always been that I was pissed off and aggravated. I wanted to write a book because I wanted the people to stop thinking that they needed a $30,000 CRM program to be successful. They needed a $50,000 funnel ridden website to get the clients. I've never had it and I'm doing fine. I'm on speed dial with some of the richest, most powerful people in the world. I can't even spell for shit or send an email. So I wanted to write a book to say, look, if I can do it, you're already out of excuses. I hadn't given any thought into what it could actually do. And I remember at the time of, uh, um, you know, I got a retainer for, for doing the book and I was introduced to a phenomenal publishing group and I thought to myself, I've got paid to spout and talk and rant. It's in paper and now I've got a book. Chapter over. I was so wrong. I'm doing paid gigs literally all over the world all the way through to next March. Um, I've got a consulting program. I'm running events. I'm on talk shows. It gave me a second industry. I heard one the other day where there was this woman in uh, Canada that um, they listened to a different chapter, Audible, on the way to taking the kids to school. And they listen to one chapter, and they've got like a 45 minute journey. They listen to one chapter and then discuss it. And I just thought to myself, I'm oblivious to this, living in my home. And there's a conversation in Canada between a woman and her son that have found a, a single point of focus and connection that they can laugh at and they can grin at and they can talk about. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty cool for me.